Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with CJ Lou from the Fire It Up with CJ show. Woo! <laughs> if you've ever gotten word that's just dropped you to the floor, then do we have the show for you? Today, I'll talk about how to deal with emergencies, challenges, and lots and lots of the unknown, probably plus a lot of Michael crying. That plus we'll talk about a wrist set free, new styles from the Pookie, rainbow colors, collective and individual, authentic power, diamond, and what in the world Ruru and the emotion code has to do with anything. So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I feel like crying now. <laughs> What's happening, Michael? Yes, I am ready to shine, but I'm also kind of like worried. We don't know. We don't know. It's um, so... I, I want to parse my words and be really careful because words have a power and have an energy to them. So I'm going to start out by saying, even though I'm worried, girls are going to be all right. Girls are going to make it. Everything's going to be okay, even though there's apparently going to be some big ups and downs in the road. We had an ultrasound this week that did not go as expected. And uh, we got upgraded from there and got upgraded from there. And now we're upgraded going to the children's, um, uh, called it CHOP, Children's Hospital of Philly, uh, to meet with a specialist, a specialist, a specialist slash surgeon on Wednesday. Wow. I'm going to be very careful with my words because your words can bring things about. Um, and I want to anchor in positive story anchor in working with the angels anchor in visualization anchor in some beautiful healers that we've had the good fortune of of having in the show and being with us in our lives who who have i'm going to say come to the rescue a anchor in the angels that are around us but um yeah i wondered if i'd be able to hold it together for this one <laughs> you well, know what it's really interesting i had a thought about you today yeah First of all, I'm sorry because I can't even imagine how earth-shattering and scary and heartbreaking this all could be. And I had a – I, I was just running and a thought popped into my head. Yeah. And my thought was, oh, it's time for the girls to come. That's what I, – I thought about you. Yeah. And I said, you know what? These girls have been wa waiting – They've been waiting for the perfect moment where they could bring their lives into consciousness when the world was ready to receive. These girls are going to be so special. I know, Thank I you. know deeply in my heart. And it's, yeah, they're coming. They're, it's interesting because yeah. Kim Russo, who we had on the show about a month ago, and she had predicted twins a long time ago, she said they'd be very different and they that one of them would have... Uh, allergies the other wouldn't and we're we're going well that doesn't make any sense if they're identical twins but now without going into detail we get it <laughs> we get it they're they're on different a little bit different paths at the moment um so i truly believe they're meant to come through uh, everybody who we've had on the show who reads on the other side believes they're coming through everything i get in my automatic writing says they're coming through um and so it's just um they're coming you, through, Michael. They're coming through. You play through. the touch and go game. <laughs> no, they're coming through. Thank I you. just, I, I don't know why even, I mean, it's weird because I just heard my, they're coming through. Not only are they coming through, they're just meant, they were waiting for the right time when our consciousness is ready to receive them. That's what I heard yeah. in my head, which is so weird because I, I wasn't thinking about you. I wasn't thinking about the show. I was just, um, it just came to my head all of a sudden I'm running and boop, it's like, oh, I see. I yeah. I will be passing the word on to Jessica because we're <laughs> we're on that that roller coaster. Yeah, you no, take in coming. information and and then you have to uh, process and let it go. Take an in information, process, let it go, and keep bringing it back to that higher state. Doesn't mean that there's not um, processing or clearing, clearing or crying to be done, but you keep bringing it back and bringing it back. So this is this. Uh, what you're saying is very helpful. Yeah, because I think it's – here's the thing that I don't know until I tuned into this earlier for some reason is that there is this new generation of babies that are coming. And, yes. And and these babies are extremely special, beyond, beyond what's even – these are like genetically 
different and improved and hold children in ways that we've never had before. And, and these girls are waiting for the right time to arrive. Yeah. They're I, coming I regardless. I know that. I know, I know it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. And I was watching some movie, high school movie yesterday, just very, very interesting of just how the, the, the new gen and now there's the new, new gen, but the new gen just doesn't get any of the bullshit anymore. <laughs> it's there. It's such a different understanding of the world. And those are 17 year olds. Now let's talk about 17 years newer. It's um, we're raising, uh, 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 you know, ETs. <laughs> they're on a higher level of consciousness. Yeah. I mean, and they're, I mean, I look at today's generation and they're talking about, okay, you, I look at spiritual texts mm -hmm. and they talk about being one. And a lot of the tantric practices, these ancient tantric practices, it's not about sex. It's about merging with female and male energies into one. That's what it's about. And this generation with this he, she, they, I mean, it's happening. It's already oh, happening yeah. in a huge way. It's like we're no longer defining ourselves by our gender because we're greater than that and this societal this younger society has recognized that i mean god bless them honestly and so who knows what this next generation is going to bring i mean it's going to be fabulous i truly believe that mm -hmm. so that's that's where we're at <laughs> <laughs> oh, Michael, that's so hard. I mean, you and Jessica have been so courageous and strong and positive. She's my hero. I cannot stress that enough. And I'm putting her through another scary call accidentally earlier <laughs> today with getting uh, another more medical opinions. But she is my hero of hero of hero of hero of heroes. So um, it just blows me away. Now, I'm I'm I'm. I've been by your side a decent amount during this. No, not nearly enough. Okay. <laughs> the angels are challenging me here. They're like, no, you haven't. Not enough. <laughs> uh, I'm working to really be by her side so much more because she is so my hero and, and just love her and support her with everything I got. Yeah. Well, both of you are my heroes, honest and truly. Like I, I, I have been watching you navigate your life and – you know, the fires in Colorado, moving all of a sudden to a, you know, a RV, um, you know. <laughs> there, which which just, we're still in. It's, I know. It's funny element. We thought we knew where we were going, and we so are craving a home now. And it's not a financial thing. That's the thing. We could go buy a home tomorrow. We could go buy or rent or whatever its universe hasn't given us the where. So as soon as we got this information, we're going, it's Vermont, New Hampshire border. We're going to Dartsmouth is where we're going to be delivering. It's all good. We've got this all figured out. And all of a sudden you go to and get an ultrasound and it's like somebody. Hello, Philadelphia. And I go, that's been cleared. And then you, you get Philly and then you talk with the hospital in Philly and they said, well, that's great. You want to be here for the procedure, but we're not going to deliver. Go to your regular doc or go move to Vermont. But, but uh, that's not in the, so you're in a, you're in this, this beautiful, um, which is a metaphor for the whole world right now, this beautiful amoebic um, blank slate <laughs> continuously changing where what you desire, that's not on the cards. What you get is exactly what you need, but you just have to really just go with whatever. Without infuriating people, um, I, I think about the story of Jesus and looking for, you know, a place to birth, you know, where uh, Mary and Joseph and and like looking around for a place. And I, I don't know when and not to infuriate people, but I listened to your story and like, wow, you're looking you're you're like a little bit different because, you know, <laughs> you're an RV. But you're looking for like I don't the perfect know where to place. get with this, but I get what you're saying. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, don't even don't people please don't get mad at me, people. But like, I, I see that you're on a journey. You don't know where you're going. You know that you're birthing something special, 
and it's for all of us and it's a gift for all of us that I know and it's twins which is beautiful right there's something and they're twin baby girls which is like even more beautiful like there's something really spectacular happening even though it's really tough yeah it's 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 in the better moments it's interesting and the less best better moments it's the scariest ride we've ever been on but every parent will say that so that's uh, I'm, I'm not taking away um and and all we can do is breathe into all of it and in our better moments we can say that in our lesser better moments just grab the tissue box <laughs> and, and be with it yeah yeah it's the tension between those two things, right? The pain identity of, wow, what about, what about, what if, what if, you know, all those kinds of things and the deep faith that this will happen in divine's timing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what's happening with Rue? You got a lot of stuff going on, many family members. So, so we did, well, just a few things for today. I kept it, I kept it simple. So we did uh, an emotion code session with uh, Dr. Bradley Nelson earlier today, who's, who's just a miracle worker himself. And, and he found that Rue had some emotional blocks and wounds from, from me being in the hospital mm. and, and traumatized while we're out. And so we, we did a bunch of clearing work on him and he's, he's, he's such a, um, I want to call him a love bunny. <laughs> he's such a love bunny for handling all of this. And it's just as of, I think, yesterday I got the splint off that I can start carrying him mm. a little bit. And that's making him feel so much better because we, we, we're we so bonded. We we go on walks and car rides every single day to have me all of a sudden not come home from a bike ride. And every bike ride is a sneak out when he takes a nap. So he wakes up from his nap, blink, 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 and I'm not even there. And there's no walk and there's no car ride, and there's no anything, and there's no dad. And and then dad comes home and is set up like little, what do you call them, child-proof barriers because I can't do anything with him at the moment. Right. And he's going, what what happened to my world? Yeah, he's abandonment uh, issues because he already has previous abandonment issues from his first life on the road. Yeah. It, sounds, it sounds so traumatic, but he was on the road <laughs> when you found him. Yeah. He was yeah. literally abandoned on the side of the road. And I, I must say that we had a, a kind of a, a, a difficult call with a, a health professional earlier this afternoon who was extremely, extremely well-meaning. Um, but Rue, I brought him into the bedroom with us, which I never do. Um, and it's only up three stairs in the RV. Mm -hmm. But those three stairs to him are like, um, it might as well be coast to coast. Right. Um, we're up there and he'll be screaming his lungs off, get down here. Where'd you go? But I brought him up and he just sat there during the whole phone call and just watched Jessica and just watched Jessica. And I'm convinced he can see emotion. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how else to describe it. Sort of like. Uh, I don't know if it's Periscope or Twitter or something where there'll be like hearts going up and yeah, little yeah. things when people are talking. I'm sure he can actually see the emotions coming off of us. It's really wild because if I'll start to think of something, I won't, I won't go there now. I'm just going to go puppies and roses. But if I think of something that's not puppies and roses, he'll start screaming. Wow. Um, it's wild. But we, I brought him up the three stairs for the phone call and he just watched Jessica and just just took it all in. He's just so wise even even though he's so emotionally sensitive he just took it all in it was very very cool who needs a garmin watch when you have rue oh man <laughs> so my garmin watch just on a, a weird tangent um it this watch i don't know if i mentioned it last week it measures life force what called what? the body battery did i mention that last no week? it's based on what? heart rate very this is a new upgraded watch based on heart rate variability Based on pulse, uh, uh, pulse oximeter, you know your your how much oxygen is going into your blood, uh, based on a whole bunch of other variables, and um, on most days lately, on on a scale of zero to hundred, it, it won't take you down to zero because it doesn't want to freak you out that like you're dead. It'll stop at five. <laughs> on most days, it's flatlining me lately. Oh uh, no, Michael. I'm at seven. Oh, and based on sleep and some other things, I'm at seventeen right now which for this time of day is pretty high. It means I'll hit zero in a few hours. Wow. It's just wild watching because of the amount of, of stress that we're under and also it registers pain and things like that through your heart rate variability and through your, your stress levels. Um, it's just wild watching what the, uh, what the data is telling us. And then you go, 
Yeah, it's life. Yeah, Ru like, Ru is just your other. Uh, he's like your non. You don't have to put him on your wrist. He's just there. <laughs> it's like Wah! yes. Wow. You know, I I was talking about Ru. I um. I, I I don't even know how to describe what I was like in the beginning of week. Totally. Um. I guess I would say totally messed up would probably be body wise, just like mm -hmm. really out of sorts. And I um. And I I went to my chiropractic chiropractor who sees energies and, and is like such a talented gifted healer. The Rue of chiropractor. He is the Rue of chiropractor. <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, oh, that's different. <laughs> I said, Because he's been watching my energy through the last, through a year. I've almost been with him for a year. And he said, you have like colors and they're swirling all around. Ooh. And he said, and I said, what colors? That and sounds he, good. So he said, teal. Magenta and red. And I said, should I be worried? And he's like, no, not for, like, you know, he has a lexicon of colors. He's like, no, when I know that there's, for me, his lexicon says black is when there's blocked energy or there's problems. Mm -hmm. He's like, I, I don't know what to make out of these colors. They're just swirling <laughs> all over your body. <laughs> and he said, it seems like what you're doing is you're stepping into a new version of yourself and you're not quite mm -hmm. there. So I'll just do that. <laughs> he did all this chiropractor stuff and I was like, oh, ah, ah, ah. you know, like it was just like me screaming and moving and uh, like it was like Carrie out of um, <laughs> that movie, whatever it's called. Um, but it, it was like an exorcism, but not really an exorcism because I wasn't taking out anything evil so much as just moving energy around. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it was very interesting. And and what I realize, you know, we say it all the time in this program, and it's about how, how these shadows, how these these hard times, like the one that you're going through, the things that I was going through over the last week have just been horrendous. And it's just like, for me, my suffering is my own doing. And, mm -hmm. um, and but then it has uh, reverberations with other people and like literally people screaming at each other and <laughs> It's like, wow. I'm like, wow, I haven't had this in a long time where I'm in a group where I'm actually part of the group and people are screaming at each other. Like, like, um, kind of the stuff. Well, that there's you'd a see. lot of energy right now. Yeah. It's like the kind of stuff you'd see on like those, um, the, you know, the, the, those court shows and people are like, you never listen, you know, like, it was that kind of thing. And I was so shocked. And I'm, I, I actually, it was very interesting, but I would say having gone through, the shock, despair, hopelessness, sadness, anger. Like I went through this whole litany of things over this last week. And it, and I think that is the thing that pushed me over the edge so that these plethora of colors would come out of me. It's really interesting. Like it, and I, cause I, I did my automatic writing one morning. I'm like, what the heck is happening? And what I heard is like, it's like a diamond, you know, you need to have like, pressure from around you so that your facets of unity can be really clear and strong and it's through this like incredible pressure that the diamond emerges and and I think that diamond was me like I was rebirthing a part of myself so a new part could come and be and I I don't know I don't know if that if you look at this awful you know this whatever, godsend, awful, whatever you want to call it, that, that your bike accident, it's like it's made you tough as nails. I mean, at each time you're getting a nearer, stronger and stronger, it feels like. Well, if we look at it from the perspective of our higher self, um, I'm, I'm hearing in my head without criminalizing it, there are some people who said, why did you do this to me, higher self? But if we look at it from the big picture perspective, and, and this is hard to say because I'm in the thick of it and I really have an attachment to things going one way with the girls. But it is still all, every bit of it. Because if we realize we're truly infinite and that we are creators, not meaning that we create every challenge that we're facing, but if we understand big picture, it's all here to serve us. Mm -hmm. And that, I'm saying it one of my brighter moments, you know, and another moment, who knows, but it's still true. It's still 100% true. Yeah, and it, I almost view, well, I'm not, I've watched you navigate this journey. You okay? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I watched you navigate this journey, first with your accident and now with this. And 
It's like different parts oh, of yourself. You're frozen are... for a second. Oh, um, it. I've watched you oh, navigate. You said navigate yeah. this journey first with the accident, yeah. and then with now this new news, and it's like. I'm not sure how you feel. I know with my 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 work, um, mm -hmm. it's like different parts of myself are emerging. Like I'm beginning to be my authentic self. And I didn't, I thought I was pretty authentic to begin with, right? But <laughs> I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't really. And I think that mm, our authentic power for all of us, not just you and me, it's for all of us, our authentic voice, our personal mission on this earth, our sacred mission, for me, is just becoming clearer and clearer every single day. And I think that's the opportunity that this storm around us is creating and you know, whatever form like literal storm awful sh you know hard work that you have to go through mine was a I don't know a flurry of emotional storms I mean it's, it's very interesting I mean there's something very interesting happening right now it's very hard to explain but I I feel it with my clients and I feel it, it's happening when I talk to you or other people there's an upgrade going on very, very clearly. So uh, uh, humanity to me, I'm, I'm going to stick by the words of, of others who've been on the show. Humanity to me is has made a choice, and it's a positive choice. And, and that choice will have the old guard, whatever we want to call that, uh, whether that's ego, whether that's uh, literal old guard <laughs> holding on. But at the same time, we're, we're hitting a new stage of consciousness. There's a, a shift, and there's a lot of energy involved in that just watch this the old school space shuttle take off and see all the stuff breaking off the side of it as it's rumbling into space that's where we're at mm -hmm. yeah I, um i one of the things that i listened to in mp3 was talking about ancestral karma and wounds and collective karma and wounds and we talked about that during our last show where you were just crying you didn't really know why you were crying yeah. And it, it, it is very interesting how that that is the shadow, that's the hardness, that's the, you know, the pressure that um, at least I'm feeling. And I think maybe all of us are feeling. That's why we don't un really understand what's going on is because there's mm -hmm. this collective stuff that may not even be us. Like, or maybe us. Like this week, I realized that when I talked to um, the chiropractor, he said, yeah, it's from um, – you're letting go of energy that you're holding on to with your mom's disappointment and fears and anxiety of, of moving from chi communist China and planting herself and, and planting herself in the US. So it's like, what? You know, but I didn't realize that, but we're probably all holding on to something that's not ours and we can just mm -hmm. let go of it, honestly. For yeah. a rebirth, like you're saying. Yeah, a rebirth to occur. That's what we get to do. Um, that's what when when I met with Dr. Bradley Nelson earlier today, he was looking at at wounds and traumas, and I do a lot of this clearing work as well, I, my own technique. But helpful to have somebody else do it on you. Mm -hmm. Wounds and traumas um, that uh, Jessica is experiencing, or more in the womb is experiencing, from you know 15, 20 generations ago, that gets to be cleared as the new gen comes on board. Yeah, so they can be karma free. Right. Right now, there's so much karma that each generation has to carry, like my poor kids. You know, they have their American and Western karma and their Eastern karma because my husband <laughs> is a white guy and I'm like, you know, I have my Asian roots. So they have to like deal with double the karma that yeah. they have to deal with. And it's interesting. I was just talking to a client and I don't know about you, but it feels like I'm just having one continuous conversation with like. 15 to yes. 20 people during a day. I'm like, that's how it's going. Isn't it wild? Well, that's that to me is universe speaking. When when you can see the direct thread from one conversation, forget about to another conversation, from one conversation to an advertisement on your weather channel, to uh, <laughs> the movie that you watched, to the next person, to a sound bite that you heard from somebody as you stepped in to get your latte, to the next person, it's just a thread. I know. Isn't it fascinating? I find it magical and joyful that this message is you know if i didn't get it it's getting clearer and and one of the messages related to what now you're bringing into the dialogue is 
the amount of ancestral trauma, trauma that we are bringing into the equation and how we collectively heal as a society is through working through our individual karma because if we're all one, mm -hmm. you know, if I, if I work with my individual pain, it will actually release the, the collective pain. And if there are enough people who are working on these kinds of issues, it, there will be enough momentum until something changes dramatically, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so we're doing our work. All of us, I think, are doing our work. People who, and I'm sorry that your work is so hard, but you can take it. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Like sometimes I'm like, why me? And then I hear, well, because you can, you have the yep. resources and ability to take, you know, if all of us have like, you know, some stones that we have to carry up the mountain. I don't know why <laughs> you have stones. to carry it. <laughs> I don't know why you have a boulder, but like, you have a boulder that you're carrying up. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. It's all good. If we all, yeah. we all, it, it, it was the class that we were teaching Wednesday night about leaning, leaning into all of it because it's, it is birthing you anew. Mm -hmm. And, and some of us, it's, it's okay. All of us in a sense are carrying the same amount of burden. It will just appear at a different, to me, 10 pounds feels like a hundred pounds to somebody else. One pound feels like 100 pounds. To somebody else, 100 pounds feels like 100 pounds. It will feel the same. The burden is the burden is the burden. Mm -hmm. We That's will all carry exactly what we need in order for us to shake away the old and come into the new. Mm. That's a beautiful way of saying it. You're so wise, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Universe has been <laughs> playing with us. <laughs> So do you have anything? Did I miss anything off of our list? Oh, you didn't only, share with me a list. I'm, so, oh, 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 I didn't. Yeah, the, the only thing is, is Jessica got this vest for me here. And, uh, you know, that the, the um, it's just kind of a coat epoxy. I'm not, not trying to pimp coat epoxy or anybody. But but the, the point is we're throwing out the polos. I think I mentioned it last week. We're really getting into that authentic self and we're playing with what, what fits now. Who is the new you? What does that look like? And you saw that before. You know, I'm the scruffiest I've been. We found the limit, the scruffy limit, and we're we're right at the the maximum scruffness on the, I don't know, the beard trimmer. It's a level six, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the word beard trimmer and Michael is something I never expected to ever have in my vocabulary this lifetime. Not even a little bit. <laughs> well, here's the irony. I've told my husband, you're not to have a beard, please. Like, just please shave it off immediately. But on you, I like it. On my <laughs> husband, actually, it looks good. But I don't like the feel of it because it's just, it's, I have really sensitive skin. And so it's just like having, like, sandpaper rushing across Velcro. my skin. Yeah, it was just hurt so much. that And, and it, he can put all the beard oil he wants in the world. It's not going to make a difference. But I like the new look. I mean, have people been, like, thumbs up in your new look? Crazily so, yes. Yes, they have. And and uh, I think they truly mean it. I don't think they're saying it just to be kind. Going, eek, look at him. Although somebody did write, write a response because we, we aired an older YouTube show um, as one of our shows this week that um, never got the popularity it deserved many years ago. So we brought it back. And somebody wrote, love the new look. How did you get such a clean and shine, clean complexion, shiny face, and like you rolled back the clock 10 years <laughs> for this one show? And they meant it. <laughs> I like both looks, and I think this one just fits who you are right now. I think it's perfect. So it's it's definitely a um, a WTF in a good way look, meaning it just all right. Life's here. Let's deal with it. <laughs> yeah, it looks great. I like it. So, any other final and, words, Michael? No, I'm. I mean, the 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 theme today is 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 really well. I guess the one last thing Jessica would say is. We're getting to work through lots and lots and lots of unknowns. And so the human mind is wired. Maybe it's societal. Maybe it's not the mind is wired uh, conditionally. But for you and I, CJ, we're wired to want the answer. What if there is no answer? 
And what if the minute that you feel you have an answer, that will be taken away with you and replaced with more of the non-answer? That's the game we're all experiencing. You think you understand COVID? All right. Go ahead and believe that. <laughs> you think you understand politics? All right. Everything. And I'm not, I'm not, not picking on any. There is no way to get the truth in it of anything right now. There's not even any, a way to get in the truth almost of your heart. That's the one thing. We can follow the pull on our heart. But everything else is a jumble right now by design. And I think to help us to learn how to become more flexible and flow with all of that. And that means... I don't know if I can fully bless the unknown on a conscious level. I want my healthy, happy girls, period. Done deal. End of story. Do I call it attachment? I'm okay with that attachment. I'm very okay with that attachment. But I'm still going to just breathe into the unknown and let it come as best as I can because that will help me. Or actions. We can call ourselves bodhisattvas, people here to do good for others. Every one of us is a bodhisattva here to do good for others. You do good for others by leaning into whatever comes your way because it shifts you energetically and then shifts everybody else around you. I love it. You know, I, I, I was talking, it's Sagittarius moon. And someone said that that is the time to, for you to focus, focus and concentrate on like, what is it? It's the ninth month of a 12 month cycle. So it's, you have three more months. So you got three months, more months to get it done. So what are the things? And, and um, so he's asking, what is the theme of these last nine months? And for me, it's about surrendering into the unknown. It okay. really, I, I don't know. What am I going to know? Don't know. When will I know? I don't know. Will I ever know? Well, no, probably no. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's going to know. And just nope. when you think you know, it's, it's not that it's a cosmic joke or something. Just when you think you know the game will change. Yeah, and you don't know. That's just the game. That's a game that maybe because we come in with this sensibility, um, we're actually being given the same thing, theme, that the two of us have had to struggle in our own way, different life stories, but in our own way. And I think all of us are. Just be open, curious, allow. Life is doing you and have faith that it's doing it for the highest good of all. Those are like my I, final thoughts. <laughs> my last, and this is, isn't even an addendum, but there's a, an expression that I like. Because you said life is doing you, and, and it's life is breathing you. Mm. That ain't yours. <laughs> and we can let go even on that level, even for a nanosecond, becomes a lot easier. Yeah. Hallelujah on that. Woohoo! Woo so for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ Show. Saying, be well, have fun. See, I'm actually using my hand. Be nice. well, have fun. <laughs> lean into the, yes, I can wiggle my fingers. Uh, lean into the everything of everything. Oh, I love you guys so much. I, 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 can't, I can't even end on the, on the regular way. I just, I just want to say to everybody, I want to give you a big hug, and I'm sure CJ does too, and let you know it's all going to be all right no matter what. Because that's, I think, what we, me, Jessica, Rue, Probably CJ. I think that's what we all need to hear right now is it's all yeah. going to be okay. Yeah. I'll be praying for those girls. Woohoo. Woohoo. Love you guys so, 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 so much. Woohoo. Woohoo. Love everyone. And love to those little cuties. Thank you. All right. Bye, Michael. Thank you, CJ. Happy holidays, Bye. everyone. Bye.